if you're a part of this group, it means that when we did the House on Mango Street response, you probably had some really awesome ideas, but it might not have been as clear as it could have been. Our goal today is to make sure that your response is really clear right from the beginning with your claim. The claim is going to be your first sentence in a paragraph response or race response uh, to our writing. That means it includes both the restating part of the question and answering the question. So your full complete answer should be right there in the first sentence. Then you spend the rest of your paragraph proving and explaining your thinking. Strong writers answer the prompt in one sentence before they answer the rest. That way your person reading it knows where you stand on things and you, it can be really clear what you're trying to say. Number two, strong writers start their claim by restating part of that question. So if you just start in right away, sometimes, sometimes people reading it might be like, I don't really know what you're talking about. And number three, strong claims answer the whole question. So anytime a question starts with, how does the author, there's going to be two parts to your answer, and your claim needs to mention both of them. Again, our goal here is so that you can be really clear because you have great ideas, and we want to be able to communicate those ideas really clearly in thinking. So a few, there's just a few examples that should be pretty straightforward. Uh, what is your favorite color? So we're thinking, instead of me just talking about, uh, you know, sunsets are the greatest thing, and there was this one time I was on vacation, and I saw this sunset with my parents, and it really made me love this color. That color is orange. I'm going to start right from the beginning. If my favorite color is orange, I'm going to repeat part of the prompt. My favorite color is orange. And then if it's a short answer like this, you might want to include a because. Because I have happy memories of that color. It would be a good and accurate answer to be my favorite color is orange. When it's especially if it would be a short something like this, including a because makes it even stronger. Let's take a look at the second example. Why is Brian angry with Mike? I'm going to look for one sentence that's going to clearly answer my question. So before I get into their relationship, before I get into any suspicion, I'm going to start by repeating or restating part of the prompt. So I'll steal the words right from the prompt. Brian was angry with Mike because... And then I think, hmm... Most recently, I'm going to say he was angry with Mike because Mike convinced him to do dangerous things. Or maybe it could be your answer might be different. So maybe because Mike wasn't sharing and was being mean to Brian. Whatever your answer goes, it goes right here, but you want to make sure that it's really clear. From here, you would then go and you'd prove. So if Mike wasn't sharing, you'd go and you'd get that exact evidence uh, where Mike is refusing to share and explain why that makes Brian angry. We're going to take a look at our third example here. Here we've got our first, how does the author? So if I were to break down this prompt, um, you know, I would have already talked about how mood is the way that a text makes the reader feel. So I know that I have two things I have to answer. One, I have to give an author's craft move. We'll learn more about these throughout class, uh, but some of these that we've talked about already are things like imagery, are things like description, author's moves, uh, some of them like the signposts. So we've talked about contrast and contradiction yesterday. I was an author's choice and then the second part, we're going to have to answer whatever the second part is. In this case, the way that that text is making the reader feel. So maybe it was this really um, spooky story that we just read that we're asking this question from. So my answer might be the author develops the, here I'm going to answer the mood part. 
spooky moot by, and then I'm going to use the author's tool. So by using imagery. You could also flip these two if you wanted to talk about the author's tool first. So this would be one option. A second option would be the author uses imagery to develop a spooky mood. It doesn't matter what order you put it in, but you need to include both the author's tool and what the mood is. We're going to look again with the same sort of idea. So this is a two-part answer. Anytime it starts with, how does the author blank? When you see how does the author, think to yourself, I need two parts to my answer, both the author's tool and then the answer of whatever the other thing is. So let's think about the house on Mango Street that we worked on uh, at this point a couple weeks ago. I would start the author uses, and now looking to the same if I wanted to put it first, I'm thinking in class we talked about contrast and we talked about imagery or description. I might as well stick with imagery. Imagery to develop narrator's point of view, but now I need the second part of the answer. Include what the narrator's point of view is. She was disappointed. Again, this could be the same. This, you could flip this if you wanted. You could say the author develops the narrator's disappointed point of view by using imagery. If you wanted to flip that, it's fine, but you need both the author's tool and your answer to whatever this second portion is. Let's now take a look at today's prompt. This is where you're going to be revising. We notice right away, oh man, alarm's going off. How does the author, I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm going to have to talk about both the author and I'm going to have to say what the theme is. So I know there's going to be two parts to my answer. So think, how am I going to start this? We've just had two examples. You've got it. If you're starting with the author, then you're in great shape. Let's stick with the same structure, so we'll give the author's tool first. Uses. Hmm. What is it that we've been taught that we spent a ton of time talking about yesterday and brought up again today? I'm not going to give you the answer, but I am going to show you where it should be. It goes right here. To develop the theme. So I put a period there. Am I done? You probably should be shouting, no, at the screen, Mr. Blickert. It's a two-part answer because it says, how does the author? Ah, oh, you got me. Thanks for catching me up here. The author uses blank, the thing we talked about. The author's tool, maybe a signpost. To develop the theme that, now give me your theme. So you'll then include the theme that we worked on today in class that you've jotted down from earlier. Right now, go back to your paragraph, the one that you just started. The very first sentence should look something like this. If it does not, go fix it now, because this is your chance. This is how we're learning. We're getting better so that you can express your ideas clearly, and I can give you credit for it. If there's any of this that didn't quite make sense, you want to look at it again, Feel free to play it again. You can even slow it down. Uh, that's the beauty of the video. If you have more questions after watching it two or three times, feel free to send me a private message through Google Classroom, and I'll try to respond. Best of luck. I know you guys can do it.